All right, guys, what's up? I'm going to do something a little different today. I'm going to do a, um, like a do-it-yourself um, sewing video. Um, I recently made a, um, a stuff sack for my, my quilt, and I had a bunch of people kind of ask me about it, so I thought I would do a quick little video on how to, how to make something like this. This one I made out of um, ripstop nylon. It is a roll top with buckles. So I thought based on the question I was getting, I'm just going to go ahead and make one for you guys and just show you how I do it. What I'm going to do is, um, it's my puffy jacket. Um, I'm going to make a roll top stuff sack for this. I'm going to make it uh, so it's waterproof. Because uh, this one is just a drawstring pouch, and as you can see, I can still compress it. So I want to have a roll top so I can actually compress this tighter and then have some waterproof protection. The material I'm going to use, I already got a cut for this project. I'm going to use ripstop nylon. This is uh, it's PU coated, which is polyurethane. So right here is the standard side, the irregular, unfinished. And if I get the right light angle, you can see how this side here is shiny. Um, that's the, the coating on it. When we make this, we want to make sure this is the inside when we sew it together. Here's the other piece. And what I'm going to use is, I'm using, uh, for the roll top, I'm going to use a buckle, these buckles, which are, I believe I got these from Hobby Lobby. They're just plain old. Like paracord buckles you can get whatever size you want and then the piece of ribbon like I said all this material has already been pre-cut I'll, I'll tell you how I came up with my measurements this again was just from a hobby store it's just a uh, 5 8 ribbon just uh, nothing special I will link in the description below where I got this worksheet from it basically breaks it down you figure out your dimensions um, for just your regular plain old stuff sack just something rectangular or something. Um, I don't worry about doing any math. But something like this where you're doing with the round bottom, you gotta figure circumferences and stuff like that. It's just, it's easier with the worksheet. I laminated it so I can use a dry erase marker and then I'm good for, for all my uh, future projects. All right, so I went ahead and based my dimensions off of the stuff sack that it already came with. And then, like I said, it's all pre-cut. I'm not gonna show you how to sew. I'm just gonna show you how I put all this together. Um, you can come up with your own math based off of the worksheet. And I'll just show you why I do some of the things I do. Um, I'm not a professional by any, any means, but I'm just going to kind of give you a quick breakdown. It'll hopefully give you a, a good idea of how we, how we do it here. Now for the ribbon, let me show you how I figured that out. Uh, this is the way it's going to go. So I took the, the width, the dimension of the width, and I added three inches to it to come up with my ribbon length. I'll hold this up here just to show you. That should be about three inches longer. The reason for that is once I have it on the buckle and it's folded over and sewn on there, I'm going to lose a little bit of length. That's going to allow for the buckles to, let me show that out there, to just hang over the edge of it. So for this, the very first thing I do is I, I sew the ribbon onto the buckle. So what I'm going to want to do is, with the ones I have, you can see here there is a, a slight taper to it. So I want to feed, this is, like I said, this is the way I do it. I'm going to feed the ribbon through the, what I would consider the back side of it. So if you look at that, it's going to be sewn. I'm going to sew it under the top side. Then I'm going to have the short flap on that side. I'll, I'll explain why I do that in the next step. So let me go ahead and sew these on there, and then I'll show you what's next. See, this is all taken care of. Buckles all sewn up. Now the way I'm going to do it, I'll show you on, on this completed one here. If you can see where my seam is when I put it together, I put the, the buckle actually opposite that. So when you're rolling the top up, you're actually going to roll it right down the seam. The reason I do that is it just makes it a lot easier for sewing it when the buckle is out of the way. All right, so now that the buckle is out of the way, next thing we need to do is we need to um, have a hem on here that's going to be folded over. I'm going to fold this over. You want to have it the way I'm doing it. It's going to be about the width of what the ribbon is. It's going to be all the way. I'm going to go ahead and sew that all the way down. Let's do that next.
probably should have pointed out before too, the shiny side is the inside. That's the side we're going to fold it down and then sew it to. So you can see, I just I just eyeballed this. I just freehanded it. If you want to do it nice, um, go ahead and pin it. But then now I've got a nice, nice hemmed top. Next thing we want to do is to the outside of it. So again, the not the not shiny part. Is I'm going to find the center point. I'm going to pin this on there, and I'm going to. I'm going to sew this to the center point. And this is where it comes into play where I was showing you how I sew it um, with this little flap that way. Because when I sew this on to here, if, you show, if that shows up, the curves are going to be to, are going to be pointing upwards. It makes it a lot easier for when you're rolling it together. All right, let me pin this up and let me sew this on there. See, I got the buckle sewn in the middle. Next step that we're going to do is we're going to fold it inside. So the buckle's inside, out of the way. Shiny side's going to be out. And we're going to go ahead and sew along this side of it. We're going to sew that together. I like the double stitch so you can see I went not perfectly straight. I went all the way to the bottom and I turned around and went right back up. The next step is going to be to take the bottom and then pin it to the bottom of this. Now we're still still shiny side out. Here's the shiny side. That's going to be out also. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this all the way around to the bottom and then I'll bring it back. Okay, I got it pinned together. Now if I have a least favorite thing about doing these cylinder ones, it's doing the bottom. It's just it's not the easiest, but you can see I got it, I got it pinned around the bottom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it from this way in the machine, and I'm going to sew it all the way around here. And just like on the side, I'm going to go around twice and do a double stitch. That way I've got um, nice strength in the bottom. Um, that's the same reason why I did the sides, to help keep the sides from blowing out. All right, let me, uh, let me sew the bottom on for you. Time to make sure, make sure you didn't miss anything. That looks good. So the next thing I would probably do is um, I would just take some seam sealer. If I had seam tape, I would probably do that, but I'm gonna just do seam sealer anywhere that they're stitching, because that's where all the holes are. You wanna make sure that's where you seal it. Otherwise, what we can do here, turn it back, turn it inside out or outside in, however you wanna look at it. Good there. Nice decent bottom. That side seam turned out pretty good. Got a nice buckle. Alright, let's see how my jacket fits. Just to make it easier, I'm just going to leave my jacket in the stuff sack. Fits in there pretty nicely. Let me bring this down a little bit. Squeeze as much air out as I can get. Now if you don't seam seal it, you will have some air escaping. It will make it a lot easier to, to compress this when you roll it. Here we have it. Bring it back up. So now the reason, the way I showed you to do the buckles before, is when I finish it off this way, because of the curvature, 
So the buckle will actually, the, the curvature will match the bag when you buckle up that way. That way, that's the reason why I sew it up the way I do. So you can see here, it's, it's a little more compact than what it was before. Um, especially once I seam seal it, this thing's going to be, you know, 95% waterproof probably. I don't want to say 100% waterproof. So there you go. That was uh, hopefully a quick video on how I, uh, how I make a, a stuff sack. Um, this tutorial is going to work, I mean, just pretty much any type of material you want to use. Um, I, I use ripstop nylon because it's lightweight. Um, this is the coated stuff, so that way it's um, to make it a little more water resistant. If you like what you saw, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the bell icon also so you're notified of future videos. Comment down below, let me know what you thought of this. If you want to see other videos, let me know. I can do uh, something with a, with a pull cord and then a cord lock. Uh, I can do Velcro. Uh, if let me know what you want to see. If you want to see more of these, uh, go ahead and do them. Um, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.